and no. you just okay let's agree let's agree to here. disagree let's agree to this because we already no, let's, uh, let's agree that you're incoherent no no i mean <laughs> we, we've seen, really because all you're, the you're just focusing your own self here by your own positions in one Next. i ask you i ask you is is position x contradictory you say no, it's perfectly reconcilable and it's coherent. And then I give you an exact mirror image of that position with different words, and I add the word Islam to it, and you say, oh, no, that one's a contradiction. I ask you, what's the difference? Okay, let you me tell you what's the uh, uh, stories. So, so, I'm done with this conversation. Okay, can I tell you that you, you can I just want to understand your position. So you yes. don't believe in free will. So if somebody yes. kills somebody, are you saying it's not their fault? Yes, in an absolute sense, it's not their fault. It's not their fault. Should they be put in prison yeah. then? Yes, they should be uh, put to prison uh, to should reform. Be and victims or criminals? Uh, excuse me, say that again. Excuse me. Should they be treated as victims or criminals? Cr cr criminals, because um, why? Because uh, the, uh, the point of um, prison or um, uh, is to reform and protect societies. It's not to to punish people in an absolute sense. That is, can you understand uh, now? So what I'm saying is that uh, well, even how could you somebody, can... how could you, how do you rehabilitate somebody who had no choice in what they did? Yes, you. you uh, th there are certain um, uh, point of prison of punishment, which is to reform and protect society. How do you reform individual... somebody who has no free will? Uh, you reform. Um, okay, let me explain how that uh, how I think that works. So uh, it it depends from where you define the self. In other words. If, if, from the perspective, if, if you if you see things that uh, humans, for example, are, 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 are uh, particles, particles, then there is no free will. But if you define the self from the moment we become conscious, let's reverse. Then... Let's reverse. Did the killer yes. have a choice? Not in an absolute sense. Not in he a, didn't because... have a choice. No, not in an absolute. So he didn't choose to kill. Yes, he didn't in an absolute sense. I always uh, give uh, this. How does he reform and choose not to kill if he didn't have a choice in the first place? Because uh, when from the point we become conscious, okay, so th there are certain kinds of um, uh, uh, forces that affect an individual. Um, can you understand? So, so for example, so you, if, so if so individual... does have free will. So uh, determine the de determine forces affect the individual. So. Uh, for example, if I take any one of you, uh, dear gentleman, and uh, let's say CIA takes any one of us for a month in a, in a lab, they can make us serial killers. In other words, the environment and a natural predisposition certainly defines our will. In, in, I, I, at the very least, in a very high extent, I will claim uh, holistically. So uh, it's undeniable. Do you, uh, do you, Hamza? Do you agree that uh, the environment? So you're not our... a hard determinist, are you? Yeah. Well, you no, say I am a hard determinist right now. It's. Are you a hard determinist? Yes, I am a hard determinist myself. Yes, yes. So, so the straightforward answer to Hamza's question is no. He didn't have a choice. Exactly. Right? Yes, in an absolute sense. That's what I'm saying. There's that's no what, absolute, what other sense is there? What other sense is there? Is um, is an absolute in, in the objective sense. What I'm trying to say is that it depends from when. Okay, so let me be clear. The not objective not sense is the only one we care about. Did he have a choice? Did he actually have a choice? Forget about him thinking no. he has a choice. No, no. He, 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 okay, so that's why I'm, I'm making a distinction, but I don't want to get into this of objective with absolute. But in an ab in an absolute sense, he didn't have a choice. In other words, the all our experiences in life, plus our physiology, how sensitive we are, how uh, intelligent we are, all these kind of things, determine our will. But uh, because they are, they are so complex, okay, we have the kind of delusion that we are uh, free. And moreover, that um, place, we can even say that we have free will if we, we take the perspective from the point we become uh, we define the self from the point we become conscious. Can, can you understand what I'm saying? I'm, I'm kind of, uh, I don't know whether that I'm communicating. I'm sorry, I, I lost you for yeah. like a few seconds because my Bluetooth yes. died. 
Okay. So let's not uh, over complex things. So I claim I'm claiming that uh, hard determinants. I don't believe in free will. Okay, so you just say that then. I mean, just just uh, yeah, yeah. Total but... absolute sense and uh, you know objective sense. No. I don't I don't know what that means. I mean, okay, so there is no free will. The person who kills had no choice but to kill. Yeah, right. So that's why we we should treat these people as uh, they they are uh, sick sick people. Is it, so, is so, is, okay. is free will incoherent? Like, do, do you would you take like a position like I don't know Sam Harris is one who say that the idea of free will is just incoherent? Yeah, the the idea um, the idea of free will is is incoherent um, unless there is, there is some kind of room for free will in um, in some kind of uh, quantum undeterminism, let's say. But C -c can I just pause here? If the idea of free will is incoherent, why are you arguing that we don't that we believe in this and don't believe? If the whole thing is incoherent, to you is the point of this conversation. It's not yeah, that no, the contradiction no, 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 exists. That, yeah. <laughs> That's a good yes. point. I mean, not just that, uh, Socrates. I don't. Please don't let me hear you in the future talking about like you know, uh, uh, the the problem of hold up, learning. Hold up, hold up, stop. Is this, the guy on Twitter? is this the guy on Twitter that makes those weird videos on YouTube occasionally? Yeah, he makes YouTube videos about Islam. Yeah. Have a like of Sharif. Nice. Okay, okay, guys. Let let me tell you how that works. First of all, what is the difference of objective to absolute? Objective is something related to a fixed point of reference. Absolute is the reference by its own merit. Let's say we have a bench and two people are sitting on this bench. To, uh, John and Mary. Okay, so if I say that John is on the left side of Mary, that is not an absolute because if I go on the other side, John is on the right side of Mary. But if I fix the perspective, I can now objectively say that from the perspective of Tom, John is on the left side of Mary. And that is the difference of objective to absolute. Objective is something related to a fixed point of reference, that it takes the objectivity from this reference, Absolute is the reference by its own merit. So, how that relates to free will? Because our world is cause and effect, that means that in an absolute sense, nothing, there is no free will. Everything is predetermined. But it depends from where you define the self. What I mean by that? If I see the self, myself, from molecules, then everything is determined. Okay. There, there is a sea of information relating to my DNA and the environment and my subconscious and my conscious and tetrasecazillion information, okay, that define what I will think, what I will do, okay, what everything. See, see of, of information. But because this information are so complex, we are talking about now tetrazeca tetrazillions. 4.5 billion, uh, two, excuse me, 2.5 billion years of information. Also the environment in my DNA, also the environment, guys. And all that combining together. We are talking about tetrazecazillion information that defines who I am completely. But if now I define myself from the moment I became conscious and I put the line of the self from here, then I have free will. So in an absolute sense, I don't have free will. But in an objective sense, I have free will. And you can you understand? Because now I put, I fix the reference. Now I define myself from the time I become conscious. But C -c can I just pause here? If the idea of free will is incoherent, why are you arguing that we don't that we believe in this and don't believe? If the whole thing is incoherent, to you is the point of this conversation. 
It's not yeah, that no, the contradiction no, no, exists. That, yeah. <laughs> That's a good yes. point. I mean, not just that. Uh, Socrates, I don't, please don't let me hear you in the future talking about, like, you know, uh, uh, the, the problem of hold evil up, Hold up, hold up, stop. Is this the time to... So, the answer to this question is just because we know how a car works, that doesn't mean it cannot take us to places. Okay. Just because I know the mechanics of how free will works, that doesn't change anything from reality. Whatever are the mechanics that made us who we are, now we are who we are. And morality affects our, our life. So we should care about morality and good and bad. So in an absolute sense, okay, again, so again I go in an, abs in an absolute sense, there is no good or bad. Okay, because the, the universe, if we assume there is no consciousness, is, so, is not at the center of the universe. In other words, if we, as, if we, we don't assume, like many people believe, that consciousness is fundamental, but I believe as a naturalist that the there is no consciousness at the center of the universe. In that hypothesis, in an absolute sense, there is no good and bad, simply because the universe doesn't care. But from the time we evolved consciousness, then good and bad started, okay. related to the human condition in this world. So, good and bad begins with consciousness. Okay, so, in that sense, good and bad is objective, it's not absolute. Because, in an absolute sense, the universe doesn't care whether we do whatever. But we care, objectively. Okay, we care objectively related to the human condition in this world. Now, what about criminals? As, as, uh, sorry, as Hamza Miat asked, what about criminals? Are they innocent? Are they not innocent? Uh, not innocent. How, they don't have responsibility. Are they victims, he said. Are they victims? Yes. Criminals, as Socrates said, the ancient Greek philosopher, he said, there are not bad people. There are only ignorant people. This is what he said. Every one of us can be a criminal if certain conditions are met. That's absolutely certain, guys. Absolutely. I have seen a video, I can put you now the video, I have it somewhere, where the Pentagon made a vaccine for terrorism. They saw where in the brain uh, f religious fundamentalists it affects where in the face, and the, with this vaccine, they eliminate this part of the head that radicalizes people. So when we when we punish people, we don't punish them because we hate them, or we. Obviously, we are humans. Obviously, we have hate, uh, suffering, all this kind of stuff. But we don't really punish them because we hate them, we punish them to protect and inform societies and to, and to give closure to the victims. That's the reason. Not because we want to punish them in an absolute sense. That is sadism. Okay, if you are punishment without outlook, reform and protect societies, is sadism is I enjoy watching people suffer. If we were able to send criminals in another planet, then why, why punish them? And considering that the, okay, the victims, okay, we need to give them some closure, some psychological you know, sense of closure. So there are practical things we punish people, not because we want to equalize fa fairness, let's say, in an absolute sense. Sorry, sir, I, I, knew, I knew you were buzzing about, so I had to drag you in. Um, Where are they, Kamsa? 
الله ان جزاك خير فري So I I well I don't understand Socrates and uh, his arguments because initially comes on says that there is a contradiction. He quotes a verse of Quran and completely misunderstands the verse. He quotes a second verse which also doesn't prove his point. Abdul Rahman gives him the argument of Molinism, which I don't think he still understands what Molinism is. John Fontaine, you know, further elaborates and explains that by the will of God means by the permission of God, meaning. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could inter, uh, intervene at any one time uh, into a person's choice but allows people to make choices so therefore it's by the permission and will of God in that sense and then Abdul Rahman's also pointed out the fact that he himself doesn't see it's a logical contradiction to adopt a position of uh, hard determinism and free will under a ca- compatibilist uh, framework so yeah. Socrates, do you, do, you, do, you, do, you, do you now take back the point that there is no contradiction within the Qur'an based upon those yeah. four no. points that I've mentioned, or no. three or four points? Yeah. Okay, f- f- first of all, whether something uh, exists in philosophy, that doesn't mean applies in, in everything. Do you, accept, do you accept that? For example, if no, I, if I, I have... So it applies. I don't, in I, I, don't, I don't even understand what that means because Abdul Rahman has made this point. He said it very clearly that okay. if you don't think there is a problem that something can be determined at one sense, but at the same time you can have free will, that you can have a reconciliation of those two ideas. Yes, in philosophy. And even if you think, even if you think the Quran says that something is determined in one sense, but at the same time you have free will. Then there is no contradiction because you've just accepted that position. Yes. Okay. So I already when I started. What do, you, what do you mean when you say in philosophy? Please explain that as well. Okay. Let, let me explain. Let me explain that. Is, is there a possible some kind of like is a, some other dimension where things happen? And it's it's reason. It's it's. What do you mean? Okay. Can I can I respond to that once and for all? Is there a Sorry, possibility? I'm frustrated when okay. I talk to you for some reason. Is there is there a possibility the Quran doesn't preach compatibilism? Is there this possibility? We're not, we're not, Socrates, we're not saying... No, please, that uh, please answer directly we, my question, sir. Is there a possibility? He asked you a no. question. He asked you, a, like, but yes, where do you think philosophy does not engage? What do you mean yes, philosophy that is what I'm trying to explain. No, but that, answer that the what... question rather than yes. asking a question to the question he's trying to ask you. It's us. We sorry, you sorry I, brother Shuri, if it, like... Sorry. It's like, my, I you're... just checked my blood. Uh, you uh, Socrates, bro, just answer Sharif's question. He yes, this is what I'm asked, doing. So I'm the, giving yeah. an example in order to be able to answer his questions. I'm I'm asking to demonstrate that not all concepts apply to everything. In other words, is there a possibility the Quran doesn't preach compatibilism? This is what I'm asking. That's not the discussion. The discussion isn't whether okay. the Quran establishes compatibilism. That's exactly, the discussion is about whether there is a contradiction between the idea of within the quran between the idea that that your claim this is the point you're claiming abdul rahman is is a very nice brother mashallah he's a very nice guy yeah and he's trying to be as charitable as possible on your position to say okay even if you want to say that there is a deterministic that the quran is calling for determinism he said even if you want to say that you're still not bringing out a contradiction because you adopt the idea of compatibilism, which brings the idea both that something can be determined and you can still affirm the idea of free will together. So he said, even if you want to do that. Now, he's given other arguments. John Fontaine's given other arguments. You, in your own argument, presented two verses, both of which do not even imply or uh, you know, uh, you know, state anything in regards to determinism. Of course, guys, that is complete nonsense. Okay, complete nonsense. His name is Booba. <laughs> Sorry, complete nonsense. Okay, first of all, the verses I I gave were contradictory. Now, what they are trying to say is that because in philosophy there is something called compatibilism. That means that these verses now are not contradictory. <laughs> so, so if in one this let me give you an example of what they are saying. So if in one place of the Quran says the sun is yellow, and in another place the Quran says 
the sun is green, that is not a contradiction because in philosophy there is something called call compatibilism that reconciles free will and hard determinism. Yes, but just because there is a concept, that doesn't mean this concept applies to the verses. You need to see the context of the verses. Guys, all this time they are running away from the verses and they are going to abstract philosophical <laughs> uh, philosophical concepts. Abstract philosophical concepts. So the context doesn't play any role. But if that is the case, Sharif, if the context of the verses don't play any role, then why you have the Quran? Throw it away to the garbage. <laughs> and just go with philosophy. <laughs> Obviously, the context of the verses play a role whether those verses are contradictory. Isn't that right? You know, you know the, the, sorry, the, the owl is really making sense now because he's, he's starting to sound cuckoo. <laughs> you know, it really, it's just... Uh, okay. So, so if you remember, guys, I started saying. But, but so, question uh, before you go on, just, just, just to you know, tag on to what Sharif is saying. Look, you have a few options here, just to simplify the discussion, right? Either the Quran, you know, uh, uh, affirms or you know claims that uh, makes deterministic claims about God's acts and says that there is free will, as in we we humans have free will, and uh, in that case, well, that's just. Compatibilism, right? I mean, there's no, there's nothing further in that sense, right? I, I think the question you could ask at this point, Abdurrahman, is huh? compatibilism, is compatibilism a contradiction? Yeah, well, according to according to Socrates' son, no. Well, so, that's so the point. Why is that's he coming with this argument? Do you agree with that, Socrates' son? Yes, yes, I said that. This. Guys, if you so, remember, that's exactly what believe, I said. One second, one second, one second. I'm trying to yeah. make it easy for the people watching, Matt, because their eyes are glazing over. Right. So listen. Are you saying, Socrates Sam, that uh, compatibilism is a contradiction or isn't a contradiction? Co compatibilism is not a contradiction, it's right. a sound argument. Alhamdulillah. Sound argument. Right. But it doesn't apply so, to Islam. So, 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 if the, what Abdul Rahman is saying, and Sharif just said to you, is that uh, compatibilism is in the Quran, that's not a contradiction, yes? No, yeah, I, I said that. In, okay, in fact, cool, I said cool, that cool. from the beginning. So, so bringing but, this idea that the Quran is some place seems deterministic and another place seems free will. Yeah, exactly. You're it's, saying that's not a contradiction now. No, no, wait, because now um, you are explaining that as a reconciliation, but I, I explain that as a contradiction. No, 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 listen to what and I'm how... saying to you. It's very easy. It's very easy, bro. I'm, I'm saying this in proper layman terms, man. Okay. Yeah. Are you saying... That if the Quran in some places seems deterministic and another place seems that there is free yes. will, which is compatibilism, yes. Yes? yes, that is not a contradiction. No, I'm saying that at the very least, I said from the beginning. I'm not saying that now. I no, said no, from I'm the beginning. Saying, I'm not, no, 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 listen to what I'm saying to you now. Forget the past. We're here now. Mm. Okay. Are mm. you accepting that compatibilism is not a contradiction? Yes, compatibilism is right, not right, a right, right, right. And you accept that where the Quran may be deterministic in some verses and may seem free will in other verses, that yes, which is but, compatibilism, it's not a contradiction. No, because you um, oh, uh, you explain oh, that. You. Uh, no, no. What's you explain. <laughs> wait, but that's wait, it. That's it. No, no. You said uh, the Quran's contradictory because in one place it's saying it's deterministic and then it's saying free will. Yes, yes. So, but you just said that that's not a contradiction because that's compatible. Wait just a moment. Wait just a moment, guys. Because if, if we assume what you say is true, then the Quran cannot have a contradiction by definition. Because the Quran if, cannot what? So let's say, let's say something. Let's say if in one verse the Quran says free will, some, a verse that implies free will, and in another place it uh, makes a verse that implies the, uh, hard determinism, is that a contradiction? Hard you say that's not a contradiction. But I, I see that as a contradiction. Well, can free will uh, exist in hard, with hard determinism? I can't take this. <laughs> what are you so, just yeah, that, so how are you seeing it as a contradiction, Socrates, when you just affirmed that holding to those two positions is not incoherent? You just affirmed that. Now, what you want to say after that is that, well, you can get out of any 
you know, a charge of a contradiction in that way. You can just say it just looks like a contradiction. You can make that claim elsewhere, but not in a place where you yourself don't see it as a contradiction. Okay, so agree with us. But, yes, then, but then look, 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 your options are either that the Quran seems deterministic in some places, and it seems like it, it, it you know, it puts forward a, a free will view in other places. Or, and in that case, there's no proof. There's nothing further to discuss. Or the Quran is just straightforward deterministic in which case, even there, there is no problem because yeah. that's your view. I mean, your yeah, view is that the world is deterministic. Yeah, yeah, yeah but Quran would be in line might... with what you think. So why would you have a problem with it? <laughs> yes, I mean, but my concerns are also uh, are shared by many, uh, as you know, Muslim apologists and Muslim philosophers. So when when they try to reconcile this concern? problem, they say the that this. What's the the concern, concern that, that, that the Quran seems to have to preach free will and, and hard determinism at the same time. Which is compatibilism, which isn't a problem, as you just agreed. <laughs> so what's the concern? Okay, so uh, what, what I will say is that you imply there is some kind of context, underlying theme that re reconcile these verses. I claim those verses are direct contradictions. So I don't know how we, we can reconcile that. So Socrates, firstly, we're not saying that Islam affirms compatibilism. We're saying that compatibilism, even under your view, even if you want to take your meaning of each of these verses, which is completely misunderstood anyway, uh, that it wouldn't be a contradiction anyway. But I, I just want to go back to this idea of Molinism. Do you know what Molinism is now, as Abdurrahman has explained? Yes. It's uh, some kind of the, the idea that God can create... Uh, creates uh, m many worlds no and one one of these worlds are people are having uh, free will that uh, corresponds to his will and he chooses this world this is this is how he uh, no no it's not that god creates many worlds that's not what it is no no it's he... god god knows yes all the potential yes. scenarios so let me give you an example, a very basic example, yeah? So again, this is just a possible way of reconciling, yes? It doesn't mean that this is a position in Islam, yeah? But possibly, so this, what it means is, uh, as an example, if I know my child likes strawberry ice cream and not mint ice cream, then I know that if I offer the strawberry ice cream, he'll eat it. And if I offer mint ice cream, he won't eat it. So I haven't determined my child's choices but i know what my child would do given a particular set of scenarios so god can create those set of scenarios knowing what the free choice of a human being would be yeah. that's the reconciliation within molinism about god creative act and human free will molinism doesn't solve the problem as i explained in the first video is still hard determinism. Also, Molinism is a Christian heresy. has nothing to do with Islam. Okay, again, you are going to abstract philosophical concepts that have nothing to do with the context of the book, of your religion. Truth is not dependent to whether you are good in philosophy. That is sophistry. Truth is irrespective of how good you are in philosophy. For example, let's take Einstein. Just because Einstein is intelligent, that doesn't mean the earth now became flat. Let's say Einstein, okay, uh, is very intelligent and he can imagine good arguments why the earth might be flat. That doesn't mean the earth became flat because Einstein is, is intelligent. The same way, just because you know philosophy, that doesn't mean truth change, changes. Just because you know the concept of compatibilism, that doesn't mean the Quran supports compatibilism. Yes, but, but this is more, that only addresses the, the knowledge of Allah. But al -Qadr... No, it's not, because it's the fact that God created... It's like, for example, me. It's not that I just know that my child i actively do an act which is i give the strawberry ice cream knowing what the act the free choices would be in the act yes okay, i that, created the scenario yes. yes but i create the scenario if you go to a court if, if a person does that 
in real life and he goes so he makes the condition for somebody else to do an action in in a court of law he will be the judge accordingly isn't that right so if i make the conditions for you to to make a, a murder certainly that's certain if if i make no, the condition no, no 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 hold on hold on hold on that's not the argument so the argument you're trying to say that there is a contradiction there is a okay. contradiction between the idea that within the quran apparently and i'm saying that's not the case because the verses that you quoted do not point to determinism in fact the opposite but let's say even okay. if you want to uh, pursue the idea that god determines everything it can be understood in the context of molinism which is the idea that god creates a scenario knowing what the free act of the individual would be if that particular given scenario occurred yeah. So, okay, so that so you does cannot... not contradict. Now you can argue and say, well, is it fair now for God to punish a person? But that's not a completely different argument. Focus oh. on the argument. Focus on your claim that there is a yes. clear yes. contradiction that cannot be reconciled yes. about yes. the issue of determinism oh. free will. Sorry, let's okay. focus on that argument at home because the people are done with it. Guys, I know this video took forever, but let me explain now the, the, what are, is the, the error for, sorry, it's late and, uh, okay. And they are doing that all the time, guys. The Thought Ad Adventure podcast, they are doing that all the time. Okay. They are using abstract philosophical concepts without relating those concepts to their theology, to, to, the, to the text. Okay, so the verses you are claim are compatible is they are hard determinism, my friend. I, in other videos, guys, I've, I've read in detail these verses. There are 54 verses in the Hadith, the book of destiny, that describes hard determinism. 54 verses. Okay. You say those are compatible. No, they aren't. Simple as that. They aren't. Just read them. Also, in the Quran, there are more than 10 verses, might be much more, that describe hard determinism. You say that is compatible. No, it isn't. It isn't, my friend. Not every, every co philosophical concept apply to every text. Okay, if the Quran says, God, uh, for example, let me give you one hadith. Uh, the hadith, for example, says, uh, as I remember, uh, God preordained your destiny when you were still in, in your father's loins. How is that compatible, my friend? So you have only two possibilities. Either that is hard determinism, Either that is an error. Where did you see compatibilism? These guys see hard determinism verse, verses, and because in other verses they see libertarian free will, they say, ah, okay, if you combine, the, if you combine those two, it's compatibilism. No, it's a contradiction. L let, me, let me make again this analogy to understand the error they are doing. Let's say... I, re I read in one verse in the Quran, the sun is yellow. And in another verse in the Quran, the sun is red. They say, ah, that is not contradiction because the sun is orange. They combine those two. <laughs> but that, you cannot, that, that doesn't work like that. Just because in one place you have hard determinism and in another place you have libertarian free will, that doesn't mean, ah, that is uh, compatibilism. That is a contradiction. Thank you very much.